Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Geometry Chapter 10, Section 2 in this book. What we're going to be talking about is arcs and chords. Arcs and chords. I always think of Tony Stark with the arc reactor. I'm sure it had something to do with this. Wasn't it a circle? We're talking about circles. And chords, I think about guitars. You have to see the other video to see uh, why I... You have to imagine you're inside the guitar. Watch the other video. All right. So let's go over some more words. This is a circle. I have drawn two radii, radiuses. Radii is actually the right one. So it looks like Pac-Man. See, it says Pac-Man rules. Now, get it in your head that these are Pac-Man rules. Because later on, we're going to be talking about what looks more like the grandpa from Roly Poly Oly. Which I think is before y'all's time. So you might, we might have to find a picture of him so you know what I'm talking about. But I'll draw him, don't worry. But right now we're talking about Pac-Man. And with Pac-Man, his mouth hinge is in the center of his head. So this is Pac-Man where the mouth, the very back of the mouth, is in the center of his head. Okay, so these little whooshes are called arcs. So if we drew a line shutting Pac-Man's mouth, kind of like that, it's an arc. There's an arc. And it turns out how you measure arcs, there's two ways to measure them, but how we're talking about today is we measure them in degrees. So it turns out that if the degree of the angle here is 60, then the degree of the arc is also 60. They're the same. This is called the minor arc because it's little. And really there's another arc, the rest of his head, the big arc, which is called major. If you add them together, if you add the minor arc and the major arc, you get 360 degrees, the full circle. That makes sense. So if we were given the minor arc and were asked for the major arc, we would subtract. 360 minus 60 is 300. So that's our, ma our, our major arc here. Um, if the two arcs are equal, meaning one's, neither one's major or minor, they're exactly equal, then they're called semicircles because they're half a circle. It's, you know, Pac-Man got divided in half. All right, the whole thing is 360. So not too bad, right? Okay, so here's a problem. Here is our circle. We have the, this um, angle is 80. So what is the arc? The symbol for arc is you put the letters for the points of where it ends and you put a swoosh on top. So what is the, the angle measurement of the arc in in? It's the same thing. So it would be 80. Now, if it is a minor arc, it just has two letters. If it's a major arc, they put three letters. So this arc is M, P, N. You have to go around the whole head to get it. So what would it be? Well, it would be 360 minus 80, which is 280. And then what would P, M, N be? Well, that would be, uh, you could do, um, we know what this is. We subtract out the 80, and also you can tell by looking at it that looks like a straight line. It is. It's a semicircle. In your book, they say if things look like a line, they're, they're a line. It was one of the very first lessons we said that. And this, my drawing might not, but in the book, it looks like a straight line. All right, so let's do another one. Here we have a rule. Remember when we learned a long time, the very first theorems and postulates we learned were if you have two line segments and they're next to each other, you're allowed to add them up. Well, guess what? If you have two arcs and they're next to each other, you're allowed to add them up. So we have the blue arc and the red arc, and you're allowed to add them up. Arc ABC is equal to AB plus BC. Um, then the other thing, if arcs are congruent, then they have to have the same measure. If you were measuring them with a measuring tape around, they have to have the same length. So if you have a big circle and a little circle, 
and the degrees are the same because you're measuring the degrees of a circle. It, the arcs are not considered congruent because the big circle would have a longer arc. Remember in the very beginning of this I told you there's two ways to measure them and it's actually length or degrees and they have to be both to be congruent. Alright, so here's one we can do. We've got a circle with different, different measurements of the angles 40, 80, 110. And first of all, they want to know what is GE? Well, we're allowed to add them up. So 40 plus 80 is 120. Then they want GEF. Well, we just add 110 to it, and that's 230. How about GF? Well, we could do 360 minus 230, and we get 130. Ta -da! Okay, how about this one? We're going to find out what the arcs are and we're going to say, are they congruent? Okay, so here I have two that are 45 measure. What would arc A B be? <clears throat> the same as 45. It's 45. What would arc C D be? 45. The angle measure mat matches the arc measure. Okay. Are they congruent? Yes, they're on the same circle. So they have to have the same radius, they're the same, they're congruent. Okay, here we have two different circles. They're both 80 degrees, and we're told these radius have the same length. Remember when we learned that if circles have the same radius, they're congruent? So this is completely congruent, and they're both <clears throat> 80 degrees. And yes, those arcs are congruent. How about this one? <laughs> we have a little circle and a big circle, and they it's 65 in the middle. So arc XY is 65, and arc ZW is 65. Are they congruent? No. This one's bigger. You can tell the blue line is bigger. Okay, chords. Remember chords is if you're inside the guitar, you're peeking out, and it's a line going across the circle. So here, this is a, some theorems about chords, that if you have two chords, and they're the same length, then the arc they create will also be the same length. So chord AB equals chord BC, because line AB equals line BC. Okay, here's another one. If a diameter, going all the way across, is perpendicular to a chord, it bisects the chord and the arc. So the line DF is cut in half and those are equal. The chord DG, the, the chord, the arc DGF is cut in half and those are equal. And vice versa. If these are all even, we know that line is, is bisecting and it is a right angle. That it is, um, that it is perpendicular. Okay? All right, so here's our next one. If you've got, uh, here we've got uh, radius, three radius going out. We have two cores that are the same length, and we're told that this arc is 2x and that one is x plus 40. We know they're equal because of that. So we can set them equal and solve for x, which is 40. So we subtract um, x from both sides and you get x equals 40. Um, here's another one. Did we go there? Yeah, we've already learned all of that. Okay, so here's another one. We have a chord here and a chord here, but they, both of them we have perpendicular lines, and if we draw these perpendicular lines from the bisected chord, they will meet in the center of the circle. And they used to use that a long time ago making wagon wheels, and if I say that too much, I'll have that song stuck in my head, so I gotta think of something else real quick. I love that song, but oh, is it the stickiest song ever? So, oh, yeah, it's too late. It's in my head. Um, so anyway, the, if they had a little broken piece of wagon wheel, they could draw a chord on it and then do perpendicular bisectors to it, find the center and be able to make the whole wheel. And you're going to do a homework assignment to do, to do that. Won't that be fun? All right, so here's another one. Um, it's that uh, if you have if AB equals CD, if and only if 
EF equals EG. So two chords are equal to each other when you draw a line from the center to the chord perpendicularly, those lines will also be equal to each other. Not to the chord, but to each other. So here's the example problem. Here I've got a radii, a radii drawn out from the center, and it's five. I've got two chords, chord A, B, and I guess this one is C, D. Okay? And they're the same length. See how they're both eight? Well, well, they want us to solve for x, the length from the center to the perpendicular bisectors of 8. Well, since it's a perpendicular bisector, that means this is 4. And so we have a right triangle here that's 5, 4. And if we put it into the Pythagorean theorem, we see that our x equals 3. And if this x is 3, that x is 3, because those two have to be equal. There, if you ever have 5 and 4, the other one will be 3. Is it 3, 4, 5 makes a, a right triangle with the Pythagorean theorem. All right. Math is great. Come back and we'll talk more about circles. Yay!